hereby call this special meeting of the Brockton City Council of Monday, November 20th to order. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk. Item number one, we have the call of the meeting. <coughs> Accepted and placed on file. Accepted and placed on file. Item number two, we have the officer's return of notice. Accepted and placed on file. Item three, we have a hearing ordered that the city council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy for fiscal year 2024 in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 and personal property. Written and oral arguments will be taken at this time and all other related matters. And Madam Clerk, we, uh, Madam President, we have one member of the public that has signed up to speak. Clancy Dowland. Clancy, please come up to the, it's not a podium, it's a desk. That's fine. Good evening, sir. Good evening, how are you? I'm well, and you? Excellent. And what is your address? Well, Dell Avenue, Brockton, Mass. Thank you. Please talk to us. Well, I've been in this city since 2004. I used to live on 56 Tabor Avenue. I understand a lot about real estate taxes. I understand about the services and everything in the community. I don't think the community is living up to their side part of doing things in the city at all. I'm living at 12 Dell Avenue. I've been there since 2010. Here we are in 2023. I see one sweeper go by my house a year. I have never seen DPW on my street at all, on Bradford, which is hooked to my street. I never see any maintenance. I never see nothing done with my roadways, nothing. I barely even got a sign on my road now. And that's where I live at. If you understand uh, Delaware Avenue, it's right there on Grove Street, right next to Trojan. Okay. Plenty of accidents happen over there. I've seen them sit there once in a blue moon, probably in the last 10 years, and patrol that area for anything. I've, I've noticed, well, since I've been there, I've seen six deaths on Grove Street. Mm. A kid got hit and got picked up and just dragged to his house because his parents didn't want to get involved with what was going on in the city. But that's beside the point. Services are not here in the city. They're not here. I'm sorry to tell you that. We got trash. You can walk out right out this door and you can see the trash, the filth, the feces. What are we living in, a third world country? And I figured it out the other day myself, all by myself. I got 20 houses in my radius on my street, Bradford Street, Bradford Ave, Deller Avenue. All right? Let's just say on basis it's $4,000 a year per taxes. I could take that $80,000 and make my, make my block a kingdom and still have money over. Plow my streets. My, my streets don't even get plowed. Nothing. They plow the shit wherever they want to plow it. It's not being done properly. We're paying these guys 100 bucks an hour, whatever it is. You know what I mean? It's, it's nonsense to me. There's no sand, there's no salt. I'm going to stand here and say what I got to say. I, I don't see any other citizens here, so I don't think nobody else cares. I drive the city every day Warren Avenue, Main Street, wherever. Now I got more time on my hands to investigate. I don't want to raise my voice because there's no reason to raise my voice because nobody's blind and nobody's deaf. Everybody sees what's going on. So I only see certain roadways being paved after big developments. That's what's happened down here. You guys did all this stuff down here in downtown. How about the rest of the suburbs? You have the big trouble on the other side. You know, you got all this, Kmart's dead, the plaza's dead, nothing's going on down there. Westgate Mall's only surviving. You know, nobody wants to come to the city. The real estate taxes are getting absurd. You're gonna raise my, you're gonna raise my property value up. Then you're gonna drop down the rate. I wasn't educated in a high school that had big one plus one equals one plus one. You're gonna still end up with the same thing. My property tax, went, my house went up almost $120,000. You guys gotta drop the rate down. Guess what? It's still the same amount. It ain't gonna change. The service ain't gonna change. I get $15 for sewer. I get $15 for water. I'm supposed to be redoing the pipes. Why can't we just do this all at once? Rip up the roads all at once and do everything all at once. We got one person in the city for service, for Comcast. That's it. We're locked out of it. Where's all this money going? 
I see 14, 15, I see slush funds, I see 40 million here, there. I have a budget at home. My parents told me, government starts in your living room. I'm the president, I'm the king of my house. If I didn't pay my bills and take care of my family, then I would be in trouble. If this city ain't taking care of its residents, plain and simple. We should take care of the people that live here. We're not being taken care of properly at all. Your comments are well, well taken, and I, I appreciate them, but your time is up. I'm a proud, I'm a proud Brockton citizen. Mm -hmm. I came into this community. I've been here since 2004. Mm -hmm. 20 years of my life, I've given money to this city. And I haven't seen any services that are even worthwhile, even for my kids. Brockton High School is almost ready to go in the dumpster. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate and it. I, Have a I good day. Follow, Thank I you, I will gentlemen. follow up on Thank your you comments. Mess. Thank you. Anyone else? There are no, no one else has signed up. Thank you. I don't know if there's anybody in the room. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay, thank you. We will close that portion of the hearing. We don't, you don't need to close it. Now. Okay. I'd say Mr. Claxon and Mr. O'Donnell. Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening, Madam Chairman. I'm Troy Clarkson, the Chief Financial Officer for the City of Brockton. With me tonight is John O'Donnell, Chairman of the Board of Assessors. The other members of the board are here as well, but I'll, uh, I'll allow John to introduce them. Uh, I'll just, as I have done in the past, give you a very brief introduction on why we're here and the purpose of tonight's meeting, and then hand it over to the subject matter expert. Uh, as you know, the laws of the Commonwealth require us uh, to have a tax classification hearing uh, every year. Every municipality conducts a similar hearing at this time of year. And while the conventional wisdom suggests that tonight's hearing is to set the tax rate, uh, what we're actually asking you to do tonight is to set the classification. So you have the ability as the city council uh, to actually set the relationship between uh, the different taxes, property taxes in the city, that's the commercial, the residential, and the industrial. And uh, what you have chosen to do in the past is to shift that factor uh, in favor of a lower tax burden on the residential properties and shift that factor, uh, which creates a, a higher tax rate for commercial and industrial. The maximum factor that you can adopt is a factor of 1.75, meaning the, those tax rates shift. Uh, last year you adopted that 1.75 rate, so you're at the maximum shift that you can do allowable by law that maximizes the benefit for residential taxpayers here in Brockton. So John will get into some of the details about what uh, the Board of Assessors is recommending for you to do this year. Uh, I will note uh, the tax rate is inversely proportional to the total value of property in the city of Brockton. And you'll hear from John in a moment that the taxable value of property in Brockton is once again at a record high. Uh, nearly $12 billion. Just five years ago, it was around $8 billion. Uh, so you'll see in the packet that he has provided you, and for folks watching at home, this packet is available on the website, and, and if you prefer a paper copy, you can certainly email us or come into the City Hall and we'll be glad to give you a copy. But there's a comprehensive packet that has uh, voluminous information, both specific to Brockton and then generic information from the Commonwealth. Uh, but as the values go up, the tax rate goes down because we still have what's called the levy limit. The maximum amount that we can tax every year uh, is unaffected by the work that you do tonight. That, uh, that a maximum levy amount is set every year uh, and it is determined by the budget that you pass in June. And so the amount that we're gonna tax the, the citizens of Brockton and the business owners is determined when you set the annual budget. 
What we're here to do tonight is determine the relationship between those different classes of property and how that affects the tax rate and then the tax bill. So that's my brief introduction. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, uh, but I'll certainly turn it over to John O'Donnell, the Chairman of the Board of Assessors, for his presentation. Good evening, Councillors. Mr. O'Donnell. I'd like just to make a brief statement uh, concerning the fiscal year 2024 classification hearing. First, I'd like to thank the entire staff of the Assessor's Office for their support and assistance throughout the year. The purpose of this hearing is to establish the proportion of the tax levy raised by the residential, commercial, industrial, personal property classes. This hearing is required under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56. <clears throat> the assessed values for fiscal year 2024 represent the estimated market value of January 1st, 2023, utilizing verified sales data from calendar year 2022. Assessments represent 100% of market value as required by Massachusetts General Law. The Department of Revenue has certified real and personal property values for the city as well as new growth. The assessors are required to fairly assess 27,566 parcels and accounts in the city. There are 24,274 residential parcels, 1,716 commercial industrial parcels, and 1,576 personal property accounts. The total taxable value of all real and personal property in the city for fiscal year 2024 is $12.6 billion, which is a 12.3% increase from fiscal year 2023 and is the highest total taxable value ever for the city of Brockton. The, this year, the city added a total of $2.2 million in new tax dollars growth uh, in residential, commercial, and personal property. The residential class total value increased 12.51%. The commercial class total value increased 10.42%. The industrial class total value increased 10.48%. And the personal property class total value increased 13.59%. People often associate rising assessments with rising taxes. However, this is not the case. Rising budgets cause rising taxes. If the budget increases, taxes will increase. The assessed value represents the market value of all properties. If the assessment went down 25% and the budget increased, taxes would still increase. The purpose of tonight's tax classification here is to adopt a residential factor. The City Council will decide on how much of the tax levy the owners of residential properties will pay and how much of the tax levy the owners of commercial, industrial, and personal property will pay. This decision is what creates two tax rates are a split rate in the City of Brockton. The split tax rate in the City of Brockton taxes commercial, industrial, and personal property at a higher rate than residential property. If there was no shift, there would be one rate, and based upon this year's levy, the single rate for the City of Brockton would be 1375. Last year, the City Council voted to set the fiscal year 2023 shift factor at 1.75. This meant that for fiscal 2023, commercial, industrial, and personal property represented 14.48% of the total taxable value, but paid 25.35% of total taxes. Again, this year, the uh, Board of Assessors recommends that the City Council stick with the 1.75 factor, and I'll answer any questions you may have. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I forgot. Uh, Chris Pike and Julie Kassler, the two other board members are here tonight also. Councillors, questions? Councillor D'Agostino. Good evening. Good evening. Um, first, I want to thank you and your staff for the work that went into putting this together for us, as well as I'm sure the finance office was also involved, and so I thank you and, and your team as well. I'm just, and I want to make sure I'm looking at this right, because I might not be. Comparing 24 and 23, we've talked about this before, there's appears to be about a 10% difference in residential year over year. I'm looking at percent of tax, 74% last year, 85 this year. Am I, what page are you on? I'm sorry, I'm on page three and I'm comparing it to page four. <coughs> That's the uh, total taxable value. This is the total taxable value, so. So what this shows is that uh, that our uh, 
our residence, our rental tax is growing and our commercial, industrial, and personal property is not. So that they bought more, a larger share. Right. And, and that's kind of the point that I just wanted to make is that we're not seeing growth in commercial, industrial, tax base. We're only seeing it in residential. Um, and that personal the, tax, uh, is that the... Commercial industrial taxes did go up this year, uh, both over 10%, whereas like last year, commercial only went up 748 The year before, it went up less than 1%. So they are starting to move higher, the values. Right. I mean, the values went up, but obviously... Well, we don't... I mean, we only have 1,700 parcels, so... Right. The biggest growth we had is obviously in the residential. We're not... We're not seeing significant growth on the commercial industrial side. No. Which is something we've talked about as a, as a council in the past and obviously not your responsibility. That's a city planning city. issue. City. And, yeah. It's everyone's. Uh, well, it's everybody, but they're, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. I guess I'm not looking for anything from you on that. I wanted to make sure, though, that I was reading that right, interpreting that right, and I think that's an important point for folks to, to see. Yes. Um, so, okay. All right. That was all I had. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Farwell. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just very briefly, I want to thank the resident for coming in. And I want to say that he's right. We can do better in a lot of different areas. I'll, and I'll just leave it at that. And we certainly should work on that because we do, everything we do is taxpayers' dollars. So I, I appreciate someone coming in and being forthright and honest with us. Uh, Page 26, and it may be my math, John. Um, FY23, we had $166,849,147 for the levy limit. Mm. I, I took 2.5% of that, and I got 4171228 And added together, I didn't get the 173245070. I'm going to guess the difference is new growth. Yes. Okay. Look at page 17. That will show the levy uh, limit. Okay. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I was on 26. The yes, historical. That's fine. The historical. Uh, yeah. But if you look uh, on uh, page 17, it will show the, how the limit was calculated. Okay. So, so the variance that I got is simply because I didn't add in the. You didn't add in 2.2. 2.2 million in new growth. In new okay. growth. The other thing I want to say to my colleagues is that $173,245,070, that's a figure that always scares me. Because think about it, our budget is half a billion dollars. And that shows how heavily dependent we are on state aid, federal aid coming into the schools. If that ever collapsed, which I hope in my life, well, in anyone's lifetime, it never happens, I don't know what we would do. But we're basically only able to bring in 170 through property taxes and other taxes, 173 million out of half a billion. And there are other fees and there are other revenues that come in. But, but that, that always worries me. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, would you just talk a little bit about the average homeowner? Because that's always what worries me. So, um, All right. how, how, how do you see this affecting? the average person when the bills come out in January, because the other thing that bothers me is they only have two payments to make up the arrearage. Yep. They don't have four payments. Uh, and then I have one last question after that. So page 24 will show, I, I, we put down, if there's no shift, what would happen to the average single family home? And then we start at 165 down to 175. Yeah. What, what the effect is based on the, um, Average uh, 2024 assessed value, which is $430,095. So if, if you stick with the 175, the average taxpayer will, will see an increase of approximately $115.74 for a single family. And that's on a, a property valued at what again? I'm sorry. Uh, 430 dollars That's up top there. Okay. All right, and I, I, forgive me, I know I've asked you this before, but if the values of the property are as of 1-1 one, one of the prior year. one one twenty three. Yeah, right. Why, why do we have to wait until December to set the tax rate? Don't other communities tend to get it done before July 1st so that people have the four, the four quarters to pay any arrearage, or, or am I... 
I, I, I mean, I can answer that based on my experience working in several different communities. Uh, the, the tax rate is always set after July 1st because it's, the, as John mentioned in his presentation, uh, the amount that's spent is based on the budget that you set. And so it has to be the calculation come, comes after that. So I think in every community where I've worked, uh, the tax rate has been sent uh, in the first two quarter tax bills have always been estimates and then the third quarter, like we do it here, is an actual. I checked this morning, there's only 89 communities as of Friday that had their tax rate set out of 351. That's it. And the ones that usually set earlier, the Cape towns that have uh, semi-annual bills, so they set like in August and September. But like most communities, cities, major cities, they're, they're doing it right now and into December. Okay. Madam Chair, I'm sure there are more people that want to comment, but I, I, I will move to retain the 1.75. <coughs> Second. Second. FY24. Okay. Who wishes to speak on the motion? Councilor Rodriguez. I guess on, on the motion, um, I just have a couple questions uh, from Mr. O'Donnell, if I could. Can you give us a... Some, some examples of what a commercial property would be like. Um, just in, in passing, well, just mean, some examples of what we have in the city that is classified as a commercial property. Sure. I mean, uh, automotive garages would be commercial, gas stations, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, any fast food, any restaurant. And then we have mixed-use properties that could have commercial on the first floor and residential upstairs, and they'd be split, they'd, they'd have split, split taxes. Uh, you know, Westgate Mall's commercial. Oak Hill Way, that's all industrial properties down there. You know, Zoots and uh, the old FW Webb and the salad dress company, they were all industrial. The new property's industrial. Uh, and they range from small, you know, like dry cleaners over here on Main Street to, you know, CVS's and Stuff like that. The Walmarts and things Walmart, like that. Yeah. Well, um, when was the last time that these commercial properties were assessed? Because uh, in looking at page 24, when you're saying that the average family home, the value of, family, of um, single family family home is less than 400,000, a little less than $400,000, whereas the commercial property, the average is around 700 and something thousand dollars, um, which kind of leads me to ask you, when was the last time that they look were actually the, assessed? Well, they're assessed every year according to the Mass General Law. But look at the um, page, the, page 25. That's the median value. On the commercial, well, that's even, excuse me. Well, that, 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 it, there's so little commercial properties, the 1,700. So, like, the median value is 333 because all the small garages, all the small mom and pop shops, but then when the, the averages, when you put them all together with all the, like uh, Good Sam is our largest commercial taxpayer in the city. I think their taxes this year will be roughly around 1.8 million. So that brings it up to the 800,000. But they get every year, we just did, uh, actually they were in council a couple weeks ago, October. Uh, we had a gentleman from Tyler Technologies and they talked about what they did this year for the properties. And, and this question perhaps goes to uh, Mr. Clarkson, if I can. Uh, several years ago, we had talked about a pilot program here in the city since we have, uh, it seems that every day there's a lot more nonprofits opening up shop in the city and paying zero taxes. Um, to, to take what Council Fowler was saying, where you know our tax base is so tiny compared to the overall of what we spend in the city. I mean, if you look at, call it $200, $200 million, it's still almost three, almost $400 million short of what we need to operate the city. So uh, I know we had talked about this pilot program, getting some of these nonprofits to kind of buy in with whatever little that they can actually share. Has there been any discussion since to try to kind of look into this, knowing that we're running into this cliff, uh, which I honestly believe that uh, 
you know, things can't be always as rosy as it is at the state level and at the federal level. So one of these days it's probably going to catch up to us in a way. Uh, can we look into possibly um, kind of reanimating those discussions with some of these pro nonprofits to see if we can kind of do something at least to help uh, the tax base in this community, knowing that these nonprofits sometimes utilize a lot more services from the city than you know, commercial businesses that are paying taxes or industrial buildings that are paying taxes? The simple what would answer. It, what would it take for us to uh, re-energize that discussion moving forward? The simple answer, Councillor, is yes. When Councillor Rodriguez speaks of a pilot program, just for the benefit of those who may be watching at home, pilot stands for payment in lieu of taxes. And so it's a program that municipalities undertake to negotiate a payment in lieu of taxes with nonprofit educational institutions, healthcare institutions, uh, religious institutions that are tax exempt so that they pay uh, a percentage of their fair share for the services that they receive. And so, uh, Councilor Rodriguez is right. Uh, we did have a, some conversations, particularly when Councilor Rodriguez was in the mayor's office, uh, about having a more robust pilot program in the city. It's not something uh, that we've put a lot of effort into, but it most definitely has merit and something that we should pursue. Yeah, honestly, if you look at, you know, probably the vast majority of the commercial buildings that we have in the city are being occupied by nonprofit organizations, uh, it would only be fair. I mean, not to pick on Brockton Hospital because they're going through the hell that they're going through, but uh, our fire department is probably more used at the hospital than any other place in this community, but yet they pay zero dollars in taxes. You know, and I, again, not picking on them because of all the, you know, the, all the crap that they went through uh, uh, about a year or so ago, but at the same time, I don't think it would hurt uh, an organization like that and, and some other organizations that are, I remember some of these large nonprofits that we have in the community about 10 years ago, they average around 40 to 50 million dollars. They're now up in the 90 million plus 100 million dollars going, you know, so if they're getting all these funds coming into their business, I am sure it's not to ask uh, for them to si kind of pitch in and help our taxpayers because it seems that the burden continues to fall on the taxpayers in this community. I mean, and I want to, I want to make sure that, folks, especially the folks watching us at home, or even the couple that came in to talk to us about this, our hands are tied. Basically, we don't have much of a choice in terms of what to do to lower taxes in the city. You know, we can actually just play with the factor up and down. Either you hurt the businesses or you hurt the the, uh, the residents. But we don't really have that much. It's not like we can kind of come in and say we're going to cut taxes to X, Y, and Z numbers because I don't think that's actually within our purview. Uh, so we're here to basically set a factor up uh, that has very little to do in terms of cutting taxes in this community. But what we can do is I believe we can go as strong as we possibly can to somehow generate funds in this community. You know, if we can raise a million, two, three million uh, in these, in, in these so-called pilot programs, then perhaps we can lower taxes on the, uh, on the property side, on the resident side by a few dollars so that we don't all and I say all because when I first bought my house on Summer Street back in 2007, uh, uh, Council Nicastro's ward, uh, my, my property tax is only about 3000 in a little bit dollars. It's now over $7,000. So we're all paying taxes ourselves. It's not like just because we're elected, we don't pay taxes. So we're all feeling the, the burden here. So whatever we can do, and I wouldn't mind being a part of that discussion, Mr. Clarkson, if you need to get some counselors involved to see to, and figure out exactly how we can kind of um, re-energize that whole conversation and basically do the PR piece that we need to and talk to our nonprofits to say, look, you share this community w with us as well and we can't provide you know, street sweepers because we can't afford to do it. You know, so if we can get the dollars and cents to do street sweeping and it's coming from the nonprofit side that actually should be pitching in to help us, I think that's something that we ought to do. We only Whenever have you're ready to set up that committee to kind of look at it. You know, I, I don't have a lot of time, but I'll volunteer some time and effort to, uh, to help push that issue because I think uh, 
as someone that runs a nonprofit in this community, I think it makes sense that everybody should pitch in. Uh, if we're asking the residents to do it, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking our nonprofit uh, folks to do it as well. Council, we only have two nonprofits that pay pilots. That's it. We have two. Yeah, I think one of them is what? Uh, Father, Father Bills. Bills. And uh, we have one way back from Mayor Units, uh, West Acres Nursing Home. Well, the association pays a little bit on the white building well, they, that we own. They, yeah, they pay. They, no, they pay tax on there the two family. Yes, you do. No, but I think everybody should pay it. it I'm not saying that we have funds to pay a salary's worth of taxes because we do not. But, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with every little one pitching in a couple thousand here and there Anything because helps. they'll add up. It all helps. You know, I think we ought to seriously, colleagues, we ought to seriously consider, you know, moving in that direction because we cannot continue to come to the residents and say, you got to pay more, you got to pay more, you got to pay more in order for us to have services in this community because it's going to get to a point where, you know, people are going to bail out. And then what happens? You know, so I hope that we take that seriously and uh, move forward, forward with that, especially with, you know, January coming where, you know, a new council will take over and we'll see what we can do to help. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam, Madam President. Thank you. Someone else. All right. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Has it been seconded? Mm -hmm. Okay. Seconded by Councilor Lally. Motion on the floor to keep the rate the same. Set at 1.75. 1.75. All in favor? I'll do a roll I'll call do a roll. vote. All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Azak? Yes. Diagostino? Yes. Bowell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. yes. Seven in the affirmative, zero in opposition. I move reconsideration in the hope it does not prevail. Second. Second. Motion's been made for reconsideration in the hopes it does not fail. Yeah, yeah. All in favor? All opposed? Thank you. It fails. Yes. Yes. Now we'll do a vote on the order. All right, councilors, a vote on, on uh, the order. I'll, I'll read the order and then if somebody could move it. Ordered that the City Council here, hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property, as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59, and personal property. Residential, 74.9295. Commercial, 16.3732. Industrial, 3.3458. Personal property, 5.3515. The facts for such classification shall be 1.75. If somebody could move that, so moved. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and properly seconded. We'll have a roll call vote. Azak? Yes. Diagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Seven in the affirmative, zero in opposition. It passes. Motion for reconsideration. I hope it does not prevail. Second. A motion's been made for reconsideration and <coughs> properly seconded. All in favor? All opposed? It fails. Thank you. I don't have the right. Did it already? No, I don't have the right. I mean, the... Okay. Well, sir. This hearing is adjourned.